everybody, and welcome to the Belanger Gymnasium at Nashua High School South. It's Friday of the 2018 Annual Holiday Festival Basketball Tournament here at Nashua High, the girls' side of the tournament. John Collins with Tom King. We're moments away from tip-off. It is the semifinal. North hosting the Grizzlies of Gosstown. Yeah, the North is hosting the Grizzlies, but the Grizzlies are in white, so I'm thinking North may be the visiting team in this because Gosstown may be the higher seed. So that may be the case. But they're my favorite. They come in here three, four, they're four and zero now in a year. They haven't lost. Steve Largi knows a lot of these players because he coached in the system in Nashua before he, he moved out of town. And and now, you know, is coaching at Goffstown, and now he's the head girls basketball coach at Goffstown. So I'm thinking, and the other thing too, John, is North played Campbell yesterday. Okay, Division Three team. It's a stark contrast to what they're going to see today, and it's tough to adjust and go from one to the other in a one-game span like that. They had it easy yesterday. They sure. North and South both did. So, I mean, that's going to be very, you know, and it was designed that way to get them into the semis and keep this train running, you yeah. know, in yeah. terms of fan interest and everything else. But are we going to see a North-South final in the girls? Your they're prediction, gonna have to, no. They're going to have to play really, both teams are going to have to play really well really? to make it. Yep. To through the semifinal. Yes, I think so. Rocket. Yes. Yeah, and that's going to start right now with North taking on the Goffstown Grizzlies. Grizzlies. That's Tom King on John Collins. Our cameraman today is Tim O'Neill. And we're ready to go. They're yeah, out here. We're going right into the tip-off here. Seconds away at midcourt here at the Belanger Gymnasium. Uh, we have these beautiful 2018 holiday festival programs to work from. We thank the organizers for setting us up in such a nice position at the tournament, as well as the hard work of our executive producer, Pete Johnson. Eight-minute quarters in New Hampshire High School basketball, including here in the tournament, and we are tipped off here at the Belanger Gym, and Gosstown wins the opening tip. We have a whistle immediately as the Grizzlies' number one, Kelly Walsh, drove to the basket. She got fouled by the defender over her shoulder, so she'll go to the line just four seconds into the game and waste no time hitting the game's first free throw. one nothing. the Grizzlies on top to start. It is Friday, the 28th of December, 2018, the middle day of the three-day tournament. A heads-up steal on the long cross-court pass by Sophia Perez, number two, and she feeds it over to Olivia Brannon. A lot of point guard sized players on the Grizzlies, but somebody's got to play the forward position. And so that duty will fall to Shannon Gifford, the 5'9 junior forward who is number 14 in the white uniform. As we look to our right, the uh, offensive zone, and that will be a shot by Shannon Gifford, and she hits a three. It's a four nothing game, so a free throw and a tray for the Grizzlies. They're on the board first. In the opening minute, 4 0. Goffstown on top. Another cross court, or another pass almost intercepted. First shot of the game by any one of the Titans. Katie Carr missed on the back rim. That's a good looking shot from the left corner by Janessa Lofton. It doesn't go. And the Titans almost got a third chance at it on this trip down the court as they try to come up with the game's first points on their end. Ariana Motivala is going to catch and shoot in rhythm. Around the rim and out. Great rebound on the offensive board by Jordan Choate in the right place at the right time. And she will go to the line. First foul of the game against the Grizzlies. Assessed to Emma Strong, number five, as Jordan Choate is at the line to shoot a pair. Titans still in search of their first point of the game. Head coach of the Lady Titans, Christina Bean. And as Tom mentioned, Steve Largy, who coached basketball in the middle school system here in Nashua. No stranger to the Belanger Gymnasium. Catch and shoot for the Grizzlies uh, in rhythm. That was uh, missed by Olivia Brannon. And a rebound for the Titans, Jaden Smith. She feeds it to Ariana Motovala. Return pass to Jaden Smith, holding the ball over her head. Cross-court pass, Jordan Smith. Uh, Jordan Choate swings it into the corner. 
And back up top it goes. Everybody touches it in this possession and a swish from the left side. Jaden Smith for two. Gets the Titans on the scoreboard. 4-2 game. Grizzlies pushing the pace. They're going to shoot another three and they hit it. Kelly Walsh. Looking very confident in his shooting form. Knocks it down. 7-2 lead for the Grizzlies who waste no time putting it up once somebody gets open. Same for the Titans here. That could have potentially been a four-point play as Jaden Smith hits another one, this time for three points. Smith's got the hot hand early, and the Grizzlies answer back. Emma Strong and a timeout for the Titans. It apparently is for Christina Bean to tell her team not to let too many of these Grizzlies uh, get open for open shots like that, but when you're shooting that well, it can be tough to stop. You kind of hope they go a little bit cold at some point. Nothing but net there from Emma Strong as she uh, launched from about a step beyond the three-point arc. 10-5. Three threes and a free throw for the Grizzlies. They haven't even come close to a layup yet, just launching from distance. They haven't had to take it to the basket. But we are still way early. Just two and a half minutes into the game. 10-5, one of the highest scoring games, including the boys games we've had this past, this early. Motivala runs out of room. She tried to go the reverse lay in Dr. J route and hit the bottom of the backboard. Scramble for the loose ball. One by the Grizzlies. Backcourt foul on Ariana Motovala. So two team fouls on the Titans and one foul on Goffstown. Again, Goffstown wearing the maroon and white and the Lady Titans in the Carolina blue and white with the navy blue trim. Spinning, whirling, dervish type of dribble by Olivia Brandon. She hands it off to Shannon Gifford, who gets called for the travel. As the Titans finally get a break, Gostown was just about perfect each time they had the ball. Motivala with it, takes it to the right side. Driving baseline, Janessa Lofton goes out of bounds. Tight defense by the Grizzlies, no easy looks for the Titans early. Olivia Brandon will bring it down court. Emma Strong thought about putting it right up. Tight defense by the Titans, nearly produced a turnover. That's an open three from the left side. Finally, the Grizzlies miss one of the long distance shots. Deflected pass, driving to the hoop. Good attempt by Kelly Walsh, doesn't get it to go. And out of bounds off of Shannon Gifford, who was aggressively crashing the offensive board. 10-5. Grizzlies still on top, but a couple of defensive stops for the Titans in successive Goffstown possessions has got to be encouraging. Jaden Smith, Motovala tries to get it inside immediately, a risky pass. Goffstown knocks it out of bounds. That pass was intended for Katie Carr, one of the Lady Titans co-captains underneath the basket. Jaden Smith inbounds it. Wide open is Ariana. She'll shoot it. Front rims it, though, and the long rebound ends up in the hands of Olivia Brannon. John Pankela, welcome to the broadcast. Hi, thank you. Congratulations on a, uh, another quality tournament. Love these programs every year. As Tom and I were going on about in the... Uh, preliminary games or the first round games we keep these all year for reference oh great the photos and the and the and the numbers and the names and we, all the way to the end of the season three-point attempt from the far right corner by Janessa Lofton doesn't go how much of the games do you get to watch when you're running around doing all the tournament organization stuff minutes <laughs> minutes that's it huh yeah very little I try to make a, a point to see south because obviously my son plays there but yeah um I Ryan. don't catch a lot. Uh, my youngest son, oh, Andrew. Andrew. I, I've Andrew. lost track. I'm sorry. Yeah. What's Ryan doing now? Ryan is a uh, junior up at UNH. You yeah. like it? C communications major is doing great. Yeah. That's excellent. Good for yep. him. Yep. We enjoyed him watching him play 
over the years. Yeah. And I Andrew as well now. Yeah. So they have a chance. All the not Nashua teams have a chance to uh, go the distance. Well, I'll tell you what, Nashua South is uh, very banged up. They probably have six kids injured, and uh, I'd say four of those six are starters. So it's wow. Uh, this is the inside info right here. Yeah, now. yeah. It's gonna That's be tough. Sorry today. to hear. Was it all from the first round game, or was it? No, they didn't even build up. My my son um, hurt his his shoulder in the first game. Andrew Moody hurt his shoulder last year. May need surgery again. Oh. Uh, we have an ankle injury, two ankle injuries, uh, a broken finger. Uh, a lot, a lot going on. Coaches hoping uh, after this tournament, kids are getting healthy again. I hope so. Tough, uh, tough go at the beginning of the season. Yeah. This Goffstown Grizzly team came out firing from the opening tip, but their scoring has slowed down a little bit after a strategic timeout by Christina Bean, the head coach of the Titans, seems to have paid off defensively, and the Titans have a chance to make it a one-possession game now. Chick-fil-A, a prominent sponsor of this tournament, you know, things change a lot over the years in every tournament. We see the Conway Arena Hockey Tournament went away, but you seem to have a good constant thing going here with your sponsor. This is Chick-fil-A. We, we are so happy to have them every year. They come, and not only are, are they our primary sponsor, they, they give us a great concession and uh, great atmosphere, great signage, and dancing great cows. Mascot. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Can't, you can't ask for more than that. Tom was uh, lamenting the fact that the, he didn't see the, hadn't seen the cow for a couple games yesterday. And when the cow showed up, it was like a kid seeing Santa Claus. It is. Uh, <laughs> they've been working. They've been having yeah. a little trouble finding someone to man the cow costume, mm -hmm. but they definitely have a couple people today. So it should be good. And then great tomorrow, I'm sure, for the championship. John Pekela, our guest, the tournament organizer for the 2018 Holiday Festival Tournament here in Nashua. A lot of tournaments all over the place. This one has the most history, though, doesn't it? You know, it, it dates way back, and uh, we we had a uh, section in the program last year about the uh, the history of it, and uh, I'm happy to say because we had so many sponsors wanting to place ads, we had to kind of eliminate that. But really? it was uh, it was uh, it is definitely a, a great history. People like Farley Gates. I mean, we've had Patrick Ewing coming through here. Uh, it's been fantastic. It's kind of evolved though to have a more local flavor to it than it did in the past, but. Uh, it's still nice to have the Thornton team come down, and, and they look great this year. Um, they, they could definitely be a challenger for the championship. Look forward to seeing them We're maybe uh, later today. The shot off to the left by Janessa Loft, and the scoring has slowed down considerably after a fast start for both teams. Under two minutes to go in the first quarter, and there's been a bit of a drought. In fact, the rim repels that attempt by Olivia Brannon. Pushing the pace is Jordan Cho. She runs out of room, and it is out of bounds. Forgive me for asking, because you still look young, but did you play in this tournament at any I, point? I, I never did. In fact, I actually went to Bishop Girton, but, uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> but, but my sons all wear purple. So Good, yeah. good for them. And yeah. uh, BG is playing this week, a holiday week, I believe. Um, oh, a nice runner off the glass and in for Janessa Loft and makes it a two-point game. Yeah, they're uh, they're out of state, aren't they, BG? Yeah, from what I understand, yeah. they're they're down, they're down with uh, like Lawrence and uh, Central Catholic and, and some of those teams. So well, sounds like a good tournament. I know we only have you for scant moments, uh, John Pekila. Thank you for joining All us. You're very welcome. And good luck with everything. Good luck and thank and you for the coverage too, guys. I you're appreciate welcome. it. We, it's a joy, joy to do the games. Kendra Cooley. The six-foot center for the Grizzlies put it home, puts it home, and it's a 12 to 8 advantage again for Gostown. But it had been a long time between buckets for the Grizzlies. The strategic timeout by Christina Bean, the Titans coach, seemed to pay off in slowing down the Gostown off offensive attack. Well, I don't think she liked the idea of Gostown being points. able to. Being able to nail as many threes on the run as they did. Speaking of threes, AM in the PM, Ariana Motovala with another pretty arcing Now remember shot. on the board, well, as we look on the board, on the screen everything's fine, but on the, on the scoreboard, Nashua is actually Goffstown in this game. Yes. So. It says Nashua, but it really is right, Goffstown. Because Goffstown is the higher seed in the tournament. And as you pointed out, they're wearing white, which indicates the home team right. for the purposes of the tournament. Scoop shot, drawing the foul was Kelly Walsh, 
the point guard for the Grizzlies. 26 seconds left in the first period. And Kelly Walsh will go to the line. Trying to give her team a two-point lead again. Misses, however. Body language evident of a good free throw shooter that just missed for the first time in a while. And indicative of that, she sinks that one with ease. So it is a two-point game. Chance to tie or better for the Titans as they bring it down the court. Chance for the last shot as well if they choose to hang on to it. Looks like they're going to go right to the basket. Instead, they turn it over. A heads-up steal. Kelly wow, Walsh look at this, steals it back. Jordan Choate, the stop and go. Bounce pass to Janessa Lofton. It was a great idea, but they did not execute. Did you notice the strategy early in the game? Outside shooting for North. They didn't want to challenge Galstad inside. Then they finally switched it up a little bit and, and decided to try to penetrate. And I think that loosened up their offense a little bit. Gostown does have one tall player, but otherwise they look like a collection of point guards. Ooh, no, the shot would not have counted. You would not. No. Well fought, highly competitive game we have here. Two points separate the two teams after one quarter of play. The highest seed, Goffstown, the higher seed, up 13 to 11 as we enter the second quarter of play here at the Belanger Gymnasium. Just a 28-hour drive from the Houston Astrodome. And the way I know that is because I was you did it. conversing. No, actually, I can't say I did. <laughs> I was conversing on Facebook with Jeff Juden, my uh, former tournament teammate and former Major League and, monster and pitcher. And former National Pride player, I believe. Yes, I think so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You remember. I, I remember. I remember having <laughs> breakfast Six foot seven, with Jeff, Jeff Juden. Juden. Oh, really? In the Holiday Inn or whatever hotel we were it was at. No, it wasn't a Holiday Inn. It was whatever hotel we were at in Atlantic City, just outside Atlantic City. Yeah. And, um, you know, and Juden, I think, is supposed to start that afternoon, right? I'm having breakfast with him. So it's an afternoon game. And I'm, I'm looking at him, and I'm going, uh, Jeff, um, the team's leaving in 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, can you give me a ride? Did he have a big plate of food in front of him? Or I don't what? remember. Why all couldn't I, he catch all, the bus? All, all I know is they couldn't count on Jeff Juden a whole lot when he was pitching for him. <laughs> That's a great story. Oh, I wish yeah. I knew that. Yeah. Uh, I played with him in Puerto Rico a couple years. Uh, you know, oh, I'm we, sure you did. <laughs> and uh, he told me some great Barry Bond story, but he didn't tell me the story about the National Pride and missing the team bus. Well, I don't know. I, you know I'm trying <laughs> to remember if he close. missed the bus or not. Yeah. I, I don't know. I That's think I great. brought him in there, but I'm not He positive. was a Salem High School standout in Salem, Massachusetts. Yes, he was. He, he set all but kinds Jeff Juden, went, he took a lot of wrong paths uh, during his career. And he played for about 10 teams. Yeah, exactly. Well, Off the glass and in an easy lay-in. As Gostown sneaks the player, Elena Tapazoglo. Say that 10 times I, fast. You know, I, it, the name jumps out at you on the program, although she was able to kind of go incognito on the court and score those two points to open the second quarter here on top. The Grizzlies with up four with the ball. Great pass on the inbound. I can't, under, I can't underestimate. Um, Overemphasize enough what a great pass that was by Kelly Walsh with a lot of pace on it. And by the way, Juden did not finish that season with the team. I didn't think so. I didn't actually remember he was on the team. Oh, he, I don't know if you were he, covering him at the time. I don't know. It was when they were in the Can-Am League. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably not. I believe, well, actually, you know what? It might not have been. It might have been in, still in the Atlantic League because it was Atlantic City. Okay. Okay. So maybe before the 2000 season. Yeah, it's hard to. How to remember? No, it was it was 2000 something? Four, I think. Oh, okay. Four or five. 2006 was their first year in the in the in the Can Am. Yeah, he was just, I don't know. He was feeling nostalgic. He was posting a lot of his uh, playing days, high school, college, pro pictures, and one of them was taking BP at the Astrodome. Out of bounds. Jeff Juden actually hit a grand slam in the major leagues. Out of bounds. Ball. Titans ball. One possession game, trailing 15 to 12. In the middle. Turnaround. Nice Kevin McHale-like moves. 
Katie Carr. Yeah, so they're getting inside now, and it's making a little bit of a difference for them. Katie channeling her inner Kevin. And now a steal in the forecourt. Katie Carr is open. She'll take it. She'll Got make it. it. KC and the Sunshine yeah, Grizzlies Band. Grizzlies aren't looking forward. They aren't liking what they see out there, no. the way Nashville has played. Well, Katie Carr, a star in the previous half minute there, she had a couple of buckets. And that gives the Titans their first lead of this game. They're up 16 to 15. On the main scoreboard here at the Belanger, it says. I bet it's got to be confusing yeah, a lot of people. It, it's it, got to it be. It is, yeah. As they walk in, they as see they walk in, a Nashua team Nashua. on the court. Yeah, and, and a Nashua on the board. So they've got to yeah. They've got to be thinking that that's the case. What could work is if Tom took a rickety ladder and uh, put a uh, taped over visitor with. Um, no, that's not going to happen. No. Actually, it's on both ends of the court, so. If you're watching the game and you see Nash, uh, North score and you see that the visitors' totals go up, I guess you're going to figure it out. Katie Carr pushing the total up by four points that time down the court. The Grizzlies trying to get out of their own end here, suddenly having trouble with the Titans' full court press. Kelly Walsh. Yeah, see, that's the thing. North unveiled that press yesterday. It and works. And they're going to turn over. Janessa Lofton with it. Credit Julia Gagnon with that steal. And the bounce pass out of bounds. Oh, nope. tipped out of bounds by Kelly Walsh of Goffstown. You're so right about the different type of game compared to yesterday oh, with the Titans. Night, says night and day. Yeah. Night and day. Bounce and pass and, underneath. And mm -hmm. we'll see that uh, probably with South Keen and the, and the other girls center. Inbound play here by Lily Brooks, number 10 for the Titans, looking for an open teammate, and just barely got it in before the violation, five second violation, there's the travel. So the good tight defense played by the Grizzlies causes the Titans to be tentative and turn it over. Kelly Walsh walking it up the court. Grizzlies came up firing uh, from the opening tip. A lot of threes, hit three threes in the first couple minutes. And that slowed right down after See, that's just it. That's what, what, what Christina Bean wanted to do, was slow that pace down a little bit. Yeah. You know, she didn't want Gosstown running and jumping, running right. and jumping, running and jumping. To let them get into a flow, and, and that just would have been, you know, too tough. Very few open looks since then, but there's one, and that was kind of rushed a little bit <laughs> by Emily Peterson of Gosstown attempting the three-point attempt. Ariana Motovala, we got no basket a travel. travel. Yep. Yeah, she slid her feet. Yes, indeed. So Tom saw what the officials saw. I saw a foul. <laughs> I'm always afraid of what you see, John. <laughs> <laughs> In basketball, it's so subjective. It is. It really is. Kelly Walsh, great defense by the Titans. We get yeah, a foul but you call know what? there. Kelly Walsh, she just kept that pace going. Yeah, determination. You know, exactly, and that, and that paid off for her. You know what? Why not? Make the official make the call, all right? Yep. In other words, if he doesn't blow the whistle, keep on moving and, the, and do your thing. And that's what she's doing. One of the two freshmen on the Titans roster, Natalia Burgess, got called for the foul on the rece receiving end of that drive by Kelly Walsh, who misses a free throw. By Kelly's body language, it appears she's probably like a 75% free throw shooter that's missed a couple because she looks very frustrated whenever she misses. Then she swishes one right dead center. So maybe there's something to that. Tied at 16 is what we are with 
Just over five minutes to go first half here. Semi-final game of the 2018 Chick-fil-A Holiday Festival Basketball Tournament hosted by Nashua South. John Collins with Tom King, our cameraman Tim O'Neill. Good pass underneath and the conversion for a possible three-point play coming up for Janessa Lofton. What a feed from Jordan Choate. You know, that's just it. Jordan Choate has been centerpiece in this game. You know, I mean, she had the ball a lot in that first quarter down low. They tried to center her. And the best thing about a big player is if they don't have the shot, they know how to pass it off. And she just did, did just that. Contested lay-in for Janessa Lofton. She drew the foul while the ball rattled home. Can't get the free throw to go. Nearly snatching away an offensive board. Katie Carr forces a jump ball. And the possession arrow favors Goffstown. Shannon Gifford checks back into the game for Goffstown. Some good height on this Grizzlies team. A lot of players 5'9 or taller, including Samantha Byron, number 23, who's 6'1, and number 12, Kendra Cooley who is an even six feet tall. Heights not listed for the Titans, but you can see Jordan Choate right there, tallest player on the court for Nashua, guarding the inbound pass, double teaming the recipient, and they steal it away. Janessa Lofton underneath, puts it up. Never really locked yeah. in on the rim, though. North Janessa steals it oh, back and got fouled. Oh, oh, my. She's smiling because uh, yeah. I think... Uh, because of the scramble, she recovered her own miss, but also she didn't want the foul. She wanted the open lay-in attempt for Katie Carr. Still it's Titans ball as North looks to add to their 18-16 lead. Inbound pass off the fingertips of Caitlin Lorendi out of bounds, so a turnover. Grizzlies ball as Kelly Walsh will throw it in. Olivia Brannon with it. Back to Kelly Walsh, who's fouled in the backcourt by Katie Carr. That was foul number six on the Titans. So next one, they'll be in the one and one penalty. Checking into the Titans, number 14, Julia Gagnon. Julia Gagnon checks back into the game as Caitlin Lorendi takes a breather on the bench. Olivia Brandon. Walks the ball over half court. Julia Gagnon guarding her player, but and that's wide. where Costell lives outside shooting. I believe Kelly. that's their fourth three of this game. Kelly Walsh has a couple of those, and she gives Goffstown the lead back. 19-18. A little hesitation at the beginning of that drive. Traveling called on Jordan Choate. So a quick momentum swing in favor of Goffstown here as they get a three and a turnover and have a chance to add to their one point lead for the moment with four minutes left in the first half. Tightly contested semifinal game here, the Holiday Festival Basketball Tournament at South in 2018. Foul away from the basket, Ariana Motivala. And it will be a one and one free throw situation for the Grizzlies as the, as the seventh team foul against the Titans. To the line, Shannon Gifford, junior forward. Pretty good form on her free throw shooting, rattles at home. And it is Goffstown first to the 20 point plateau. Up three now as Gifford hits both of her free throws. Ariana Motovalo with it. Set play offense here for North. Well, Motovalo just yeah, ran out of room. is good at driving the baseline, but sometimes she runs out of room, and she did right there. Oh, Choke's going to get whistled. And that will put Kelly Walsh at the line for a one and one. 18 foul against the Titans. Checking in for the Grizzlies, number 11, Elena Toposoglu. Elena Toposoglu checks back into the game for Goffstown. Grizzlies 
showing off their free throw shooting ability here. Kelly Walsh. Yeah, she missed a couple, but you can see she's a high percentage free throw shooter. She is about six for eight at this point, I think. Maybe five for seven. Far side. And look, Gosto, and there's a, ah, uh, Bodavara. Good idea, she got, let's see if she got in the act. I think she did. 316 left, Goffstown with a five point lead. The one thing the North's gotta do now is they, see they've gotta be very careful, John. You gotta defend the perimeter. You can't let those Goffstown shooters get open. But that opens up the middle. So that's where Jordan Choke comes in defensively. But the rest of the Titans have got to move to the outside and shut down that three point game. That's a great point that I believe Christina might make with her team at halftime, but yes, that would be a game changer if they can do that, because obviously that's a big strength of this Grizzlies team. They're shooting from the outside. When left unattended, they will hurt you. Yep, they will. Ariana Motovala helps her team with her free throw shooting ability. She makes both, and it's a three-point game again. In favor of the Grizzlies. That pass actually hit the strings below the hoop. And I don't think we're going to see any alley-oop jams in this game. If we no, I'm not out there, so you won't see it. <laughs> if we did have that ability, that was the perfect alley-oop pass, but right. it wasn't happening. It was an errant pass by the Grizzlies. It was a turnover. And with 3.04 remaining, the Titans have a chance to potentially tie this up here if they choose to launch a three-pointer. As Ariana Motovala is able to do, she dribbles left and right. Finds the open teammate, Katie Carr, driving to the hoop, and we have a travel? Yeah. Had a blocked shot on what looked like kind of a Magic Johnson driving hook, and uh, never got it out of her hand. Turned into a travel on Katie Carr, who had an opportunity to shoot that as soon as she received the pass right. from Ariana, and probably should have. What a good pass to the cutter. Shannon Gifford to Kelly Walsh. It's out of bounds, though. Off of the Titans. Good one-on-one -on -one defense played by the Titans, even though it was a good pass to the cutter. No easy path to the basket after receiving it to Kelly Walsh. Three-pointer from distance. Left alone just for a second, and they put it up. Emma Strong missed to the left, though, and rebound Titans fouled in the backcourt. And it will be a one-and-one free throw shooting well, opportunity. Take advantage. You've got to take advantage of these free throws against this Goffstown team. And I talked to Steve Largy before the game and he said that, he, you know, they beat North early in the season in, the, in, a, in, a, in an early season meeting. And he said to me, he said, they played, outplayed us for three quarters. And they still managed to pull out a win. So he, you know, as I put the favorite mark right on him, I said, you're going to win this. So, but we'll see if I'm right or not. I guess both teams, both coaches are I, I, conscious of what the it, difference but was. But I tell you that. what, if you're North, if you're North, this is the of any of these teams in all these tournament games, this is the best game for your North team to play a tough Goffstown team in a, in a tournament game. It's going to really help you for the regular season. Oh, if that had gone, I, I, would I say, was going to say oh, too. Oh my goodness, that's pushing it. With it, Jaden Smith, Ariana Motovala. Ariana inside and drawing the foul. Nicely done by North. Good ball movement. Katie Carr was going to either make it or get fouled and make it. She gets fouled. And we'll go to the line. Katie Carr can make it a one point game right here. She does it. No, they missed a couple early in the, in the game, too, you know, and I thought that that was a, a big deal. Two fourteen remaining. First half. Katie makes the second. A one-point game. Grizzlies ball. Olivia Brannon. Being guarded by Janessa Lofton, Kelly Walsh with it, and Jaden Smith on her. Back to Olivia Brandon. 
under two minutes. Sophia Perez faked the shot. Up top it goes to Kendra Cooley, six foot center, top of the key. Tight defense by the Titans. No easy looks available for the Grizzlies, and they're content to be patient. Right. Thirty second possession here for the Grizzlies. No shots yet. Walsh directing traffic off a pick. Well, you like double her team as a player, don't you? drives past the double team. I, lo I love her as a player. She makes this team go. There's no question about it. Yeah, you're right. She has been the key component of this Grizzlies team. The reason oh, why yeah. they're ahead by three. Yep. A lot of talent, but definitely. Bang. Coming. How about that? We got a tie game there, partner. Peyton Ryan with her first shot of the game. Wait, how many times have we ever said her name? In Games. Not much. Right? Off the bench, Tom. Yes, for no a doubt big about it, three huh? point oh, hit. I know it. And it, as you said, it was going in the whole way, right out of her hand. Up well, foul on the rebound. It's going to stay at Goffstown. They're going to go to the line. A lot of fouls in this first half. We got 18 total fouls in the first half. You know how tough that is to do. I mean, you talk about it. Oh, come off a bench like that and hit it. Hit Two an full shot. quarters on the bench, and then yeah. you come out and just no doubt about it. dead central. You know? But now Gostown at the line with a chance to go ahead. The lawman with a couple of gifts for us, huh? Yes. Yep. Uh, Cam nice Cobra's, pass. Cam Cobra's dad. All right, here's what I, I don't with. like. Here's yeah. what I don't like if I'm if I'm Christina Bean. Gostown's living in the paint right now. They're living in the paint. Yeah. They got the penetration. Even, both guards are penetrating very easily. Actually, three guards are penetrating very easily, and they get the bounce passes in the paint. That bounce pass should have been picked off. You know, it's funny. It's a chess game because it was all about the outside shooting at the beginning of the game for Goffstown, and then it shifted. North came out, clamped down, got in the face of the outside shooters, and now they started driving to the basket. So another adjustment right. in the offing for the Titans. Grizzlies are tough. They... Missed still, that one, though. If North could play it right, they might have the lead going into the locker room. They might. 40 you know? seconds left to go here. It's anybody's lead to grab before that halftime buzzer. Oh, Jaden Smith. Outside it goes, yep. and Peyton Ryan tried for another. Yeah, she tried for another three, but here's the thing. I'll tell you in a second. Kelly Walsh with it. With 25 seconds left to go. The dangerous Kelly Walsh. Open three. No. Short. She's more Jordan Choate rebound, yeah, and she foul. got fouled. And she's going to go to the line, but Choate is not a very good free throw shooter. She's going to make these. Jaden Smith on that, on that last possession. It's the bonus, I think, 10 fouls against the Grizzlies. So. On that last possession. Was it Smith, or was it? I'm not sure who it was. But there was an opening to drive the lane, and they didn't take it. Two defenders were there, and they were afraid that the two defenders would converge. It was Jaden Smith. It was, and it was there for the and table. I think it was there. I think she had that, that burst. That's a burst that this one has. Goffstown. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly Walsh, number She's got one. that. She would have taken that to the hoop. Yeah. You've Rebound. got to have that no fear. I'm going to do it and let the ref make a call if there's going to be a call. Jordan showed unable to make those two free throws and still a one-point lead for Goffstown. Six seconds, no drive. There was contact. Four seconds, no will they get the shot away? They will, right here. Oh! oh. Just off the glass. Janessa, Jaden Smith and Janessa Lofton nearly team up for a buzzer beater, but just off the rim and out. And we go to the locker room at halftime, a one-point game here in the 2018 Holiday Festival Basketball Tournament. Semi-final, North versus Gosstown. It's anybody's basketball game. John Collins, Tom King, and our lens man, Tim O'Neill, will be back with you for the exciting conclusion of this one right after this. So we were walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom packed me turkey and cheese. She's smart. I really want cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have, really another, hope bad we don't have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. 
Halftime here at the Chick-fil-A with the Nashua North girls trailing Golfstown, who's my pick, by the way, to win this tournament, 26-25. I'm here with Brad Creek, a guest who's uh, got a day off, I believe, from the Commonwealth Motors Tournament down in uh, Andover, Massachusetts. And he's here with us at halftime to chat. Brad Creek looking for a four-peat this year. And, you know, it's tough to do, but you've got the players to do it. What, how, how has this team evolved over the first three weeks of the season? Yeah, they've come a long way. We, Tom, as you said, we got a lot of kids back. So, you know, it's funny how last year we, we came into the season feeling like we were really young. We had eight sophomores oh, in the rotation at yeah. the beginning of the season. And last it year. Showed, it showed against some of the iron. It definitely did. Yeah. And, we, and the way our schedule worked last year, we played, as you know, we played a lot of those oddest, tough, out of state games in the first half of the season. And you know we got we got pushed around a little bit, and but it was a great great thing for the kids to to go through, grew up a lot, and then you know by the time we got to tournament time, those sophomores were you know playing like juniors and seniors, and now they are juniors. So the core of our team, as you know, is juniors, right. and a lot of experience there too. A lot of those kids have played two full seasons and been on the floor in crunch time in a lot of big games. My guess is, as long as you're coaching this team, you are going to want to play those out of state games. Yeah, as long as we, as long as the state continues to allow us to do it, which they right. do, um, uh, we just think philosophically, we think it's just a great thing for for our program, great thing for the kids, um, and so yeah, we 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 started it last year, you know, with the state's permission and, and the support of our administration, and it's been a fantastic thing, I think, for everybody involved. Brad, what's the difference between last year you had one senior, you know, who graduated, Carolyn Hoffer, who was just. I don't think there's ever been a more popular athlete in the <laughs> female athlete in the history of the school. I mean, she was just outstanding, you know. And and I think that I think I think winning it for her was one of the biggest drives for you guys and motivational things. But now she's gone. What's the biggest difference between last year's team and this year's team in your mind? Yeah. So uh, you know, again, people say, well, you only lost one player. Oh, big player though. But you know. There's a there's a there's a loss of a player and there's a loss of a player and and she she's a she was and is a special special kid so kid won three state championships in, in four years right. and was just a tremendous leader very talented kid did, really did everything for us and a lot of what we did on and off the court uh, informally really revolved around her and her personality and sure. so it was a huge loss but. She did her job, and she really taught a lot of the younger kids how to lead and, and how we want things done. So I think the biggest thing between last year and this year is that we come into the season from day one with a really veteran group. So a lot of the learning curve that we went through last year and the growing up process we went through last year is not something I think we're faced with, with, with this year. So that's that's a blessing, and, and the big thing is just to try to stay healthy and keep getting a little better every day. You told me before the season you were going to find out soon after a few weeks maybe who the leaders on this team would be. Who are they? You know, I think uh, obviously Aaron Carney comes to mind. Yep. Ju junior captain, uh, point guard has, you know, been a been a main cog in the wheel for us since the day she stepped on campus. So, you know, kind of a quiet kid. Yeah. Um, but uh, a good player. But good. Boy, boy, she's, yeah. she's a special talent. Yes. Yep. Uh, has an unbelievable motor, great understanding of the game, leads in her own way. A little bit, actually, a little bit like Hoffer did in that right. she, she's not a tremendously vocal kid, but just leads by example, and everybody else kind of gets in line behind her. You know, the other kid that I'll mention, and very different personality, a little bit more of a much bigger personality, and has really grown up a lot, and um, just has that kind of way about her that the other kids fall in line and kind of follow her lead as a Leah Foreman. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Just, I wouldn't have guessed that. Uh, you know, she was just, she yeah. looked like, you know, uh, she was just a, an outstanding player for you, but very quiet, didn't do, didn't say a whole lot, you yeah. know, it seemed. I think she, you know, she was, she she was one of those kids that made a just huge strides throughout the course of last year. Really? Yes. Um, yep. You know, was injured her freshman year, had a little bit of an injury early last year to an ankle. Uh, so she got off to a bit of a slow start, but boy, when she hit her stride in the middle of the season, um, you know, we don't win last year without her. No, you don't. Uh, and the thing tremendous. was is that she was, you know, one thing about her was she's not afraid to take it to the basket for, for a kid of her size on the dribble, which I think was huge. Brad Creek, next game at Commonwealth Motors is going to be on Saturday. Who are you going to play? All right, we got a very, very tough Westford Academy team tomorrow at 4.30 at Andover High School. Okay, anybody who wants to uh, head down there after you stop in here at the Chick-fil-A, feel free to do so. We will see you during the course of the year, probably against a couple of those out-of-state teams. And my guess is the main competition for you in-state, Pinkerton Academy right now.
Ping it in Bedford Memorial. Yep, I those think they're four probably the, same the four. four. Yep. yep. All right, Brad Creek, thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, too. Second half underway here at the Belanger Gym in the semifinal and right up on the scoreboard, Jordan Cho, 27-26. North retakes the lead in what has become a seesaw battle. That one left short. Uh, the jumper beyond the arc by Olivia Brannon. And the easy lay-in and it doesn't go. Oh, frustration there for Jaden Smith who could have given the Titans their first three-point lead of the game. Instead, Kelly Walsh driving with a chance to put the Grizzlies back up on top, and she does. The hard-driving all-star point guard for the Grizzlies, Kelly Walsh. 28-27, Gosstown back up on top, and that's a clean steal for Shannon Gifford. Chance for a three-point lead. Big swing here in this one as Kelly Walsh putting on a layup drill clinic early here in the third period. 30-27, going back to that drive, too hard off the near rim. Offensive board for the Titans, they can't get it to go though. Couple of chances, Walsh has it. She sees Brennan up ahead of the field, but Ariana Motivala is there to block her path to the basket. Thinking about a catch and shoot, Shannon Gifford takes it back up top and Kelly Walsh will slow it down for a change with Janessa Lofton on her. Inside the cutter is Walsh. See? Puts it right up. Walsh, inside. She's got two baskets already driving to the hoop here in the third she period. Makes the move inside. She's real good at it. You can tell she's done it before many times. She's at the line and in and out. Walsh. Three quarters of her shot, her free throws in the first half. And she's 50-50 here in the second half so far. So she's got five points already here in the third period. Kelly Walsh for Gostown. Motivala to Katie Carr. Twisting. This is the important period right here, I think, this third quarter. Was it the key difference in the uh, I don't first know. Meeting? I wasn't there, and I don't have the score sheet in front of me, so I don't know. But as Tom said... Largy, the coach for the Grizzlies, says that the Titans outplayed Goffs down three out of the four quarters. Take, you've got to take the shot. You've got the ball in the paint with nobody around you. Just put it up. Instead, you drive and you force a turnover, and now yeah. you're, you're stuck. You've and got to be, you can't be afraid right. to shoot the ball when you're open in the paint. Unfortunately, Katie has done that a couple of times. Right. Where she you've, got to, you've got to put the ball up. Passed up an open shot yep. in the paint and then turned it over. You can't do that. So she didn't even get the chance to score a couple of times there. And there's a shot in the paint, right on cue, Olivia Brandon for the Grizzlies, and it's a five-point yeah, lead for Gostow. Yeah, they're one more hoop away from calling a timeout. Titans trying to answer back here. They've missed a few opportunities from in close. Jordan Choates the catch and shoot, and she hits it. Yeah, that's a nice shot. See, that's it, catch and shoot. Confident. Got to be confident in what you're doing. You've got to. You can't pass up shots like that. But Jordan Choate didn't. She was on the arc, so it was only a two-pointer. That's good she See, didn't look down. See, her role is a lot different today than it was yesterday. Don't you agree? Yes. Catch and shoot from the corner. Airs it out, though. Yep. A miss for Emma Strong. Here comes Motovala. Let's see what she wants to do. Does she want to drive the lane? And, and get... No, nope, in the choke. There you go. Nice right pass. Ah. Not able to Not finish there. it, though. Ah, maybe it's going to go blue. Yep. Yep. Brad Zepinis is the other ref here. Oh, yeah, of course, yes. right? Former Chicago Cub, uh, minor leaguer. That, uh, that's three missed layups for the Titans in the third quarter with that miss by Jordan Choate. Unfortunately, they could have six more points than they have. Oh, Aiden Smith. Smith. I like that. There you go. See, North just keeps hanging around. And keeps they up. sure do. I love it, the fact that they didn't settle for the outside. Like Walsh just did. In and out. Kelly Walsh, so deadly, oh, steals that, it huh? and puts it in. Yeah. Oh, fell asleep. Such a good player. You cannot sleep Jayden on Smith Kelly Walsh. Fell asleep 
And that's what Christina Bean's gonna stop that right now. Yeah. With 4-10 to play here in the quarter in a 35-31 ball game. She just seems to be operating a step ahead of everybody. Kelly Walsh, heads up player on both ends of the floor is the reason why the Grizzlies are up 35 to 31. She has seven points so far here in this third quarter. It's funny, uh, Pete's rocking out to the Pete's beat. Pete's rocking out to the beat, yep. <laughs> it's Johnson. almost Gloria Pete Estefan, Johnson, but not quite. Executive producer. So Tony I had my head camera. down in my Twitter looking for the BG, like what's going on with Bishop Girt, and I look up, there's Brad Crick. You interviewed him at halftime. It's like, sometimes you don't have to get all your news from social media, I guess. Now, they're loaded. Pinkerton's the only team I think that can beat them in state. They're eyeing each other from a distance right now. Like, well, they, like that, two that Tyrannosaurus dis that Rexes. That distance closes in a couple of weeks. On January 18th, they play in Derry. Oh, it was a wide open look for Jaden Smith. Yeah, but, I'd take it. I would still take that yeah, shot. Yeah, I would too, but unfortunately, what do we got? Tommy. Oh, Tommy. And uh, I got a question that call too. Olivia Brown is like, really? No. Oh, okay. You notice we only have, mm. no, we do have three refs. Okay. I thought yeah. we only had two. We have three. And they see all. Inbounded. Janessa Lofton got fouled. Non shooting foul. Gostown making a couple of substitutions now. Elena Toposoglu comes back into the game. Toposawa? <laughs> <laughs> nice pass. Oh, not able to get oh, it. Got the catch and shoot, though. Going to have a jump ball. It's going to go Gostown's way. You're right. No. Oh. Yeah. No, they, they, uh, they call it fed out. It's Gostown's no, the, ball. No, the arrow was correct. They just misread it. And the official score let them know. Gosstown arrow, so the next jump ball, of course, will go for the Titans, but that doesn't help right now. They're down four, and Olivia Brandon walking it up court. Guess who's, oh, I was going to say, guess who's not out there, Tom? Just taking a breather in the corner is Kelly Walsh. It's funny not to see her with the ball. And yeah, and, they, and, and the defense knew the ball. They were going to go her way and, and played it that way. Yeah. Nice play by North. Open look for Jaden Smith, and she back rims no, it. Oh, but there's the weak side rebound. No call. Jordan Choke gets it outside yep. immediately. Oh. <laughs> Recovering that, yeah. Nice save by Smith. Motovala, Motiv she'll take it right to the hole. She traveled. got fouled. I believe she traveled, but she got away with it. Yeah. Before the, she got the hand on. Yes. Yeah, I think I saw it when you're talking about I'll go, I'll go you one better. I don't think she was fouled or she traveled. I think she just lost the handle on the ball. But. She did lose the handle on the ball. Yeah. But you yeah, pin drop with you. Yep. Church is in session. Yes, no doubt free about throws. it. Which is okay in this case. It's the home team. It's one comes down shoots that everybody's going to get lost. Exactly, yeah. You're not going to, you don't have that stupid crowd here today. Two point game. That five-point lead that Grizzlies had briefly was an anomaly in this one. It's been mostly one- and two-point advantages for both teams. A catch and shoot. Way downtown. Yep. Ooh. Newly into Gotta the game. Got to secure that rebound. Got a break with the turnover. Yes. Elizabeth Ashford newly into the game launched that one. Peyton Ryan was newly into the game in the first half when she went dead center on a three-pointer. Not easy to do, though. Off the bench. Oh, Smith's got to take that. Yeah, I agree. She's not feeling it, Tom. No, she's not. Yeah, you got to take and, that shot. But she waited a long time. You got to shoot. And when Choke came yeah. down the lane, Choke's got to make some inside shots, too. She's missed a few. She has. She's cold in the third quarter. But still, got to take that jumper. Off, off the her knee. And Kelly Walsh. North ball. A rare miscue, but it's good defense. They knocked the ball this out of her hands. Off her thigh. See, Goffstown right now isn't able to get that outside game going that they had in the first half. Yeah, down. they're trying to. I think to if they get that game going, I think they can pull away. They missed a few long shots, although, you know, Walsh hasn't taken them. And the turnover. Smith again. lost the handle again. Here Walsh. we go. Dostown's got to settle it up, slow it up. Sophia Perez hits Olivia Brandon yep. trailing. Walsh fake left, throws it oh, underneath. there it is. Elizabeth Ashford couldn't I'll convert. I'll tell you what, Ashford got away with the travel. She slid that foot. She did. Long pass, and of course, oh. who's right there? Kelly Walsh. The turnovers keep piling up. Behind the back, Kelly Walsh is a player. 
She is. Olivia Brandon has it. Sophia Perez thought about it, but she had Jordan show right there and probably would have had a chance to block that shot had she taken it. To pose the glue, hands it off to Ashford. Ashford to Brandon outside. The cutter is Walsh, but good defense right on her was Olivia Masroll. Open look from the corner, front rims it. Well, we Ashford said, rebound. We haven't said Olivia Masroll. No, made first too time. Much today. Yes, yeah. exactly. Nate Foul is called. Masroll's daughter, Foul's number 15. Foul is called on a play that I thought was probably. She's keen coming in. They must have had quite a journey here because it, it's not pretty out there in terms of yeah. the warm up. Never really. They always tell you that that warm up is going to come and it always takes its time getting up here. I haven't mentioned the weather was kind of sleeting this morning and uh, just messed up the roadway. So that had to be a slow slog eastbound from Keene. Yes, it had to be. And I think one of the things was is what they did here was they took that 8 o'clock game off the schedule. Had one had one game in the auxiliary gym and one game here at 9.30. They played two at 9.30 simultaneously. We had John Ben Kayla on earlier. I didn't get a chance to ask him about it that. I didn't think about that, but that's one of the things they have to do to run a good tournament, make some adjustments on the fly. So speaking of making adjustments, we are in a timeout here, and uh, it is a, a great opportunity for both these teams to play in a, a tightly contested contest early in the season where every decision, every pass, every coaching. Um, no, I think this is a great game. Yeah, coaching session yep. is key. Goffstown, you know, 35, North mistaken. 33. Want, yeah, North wants to get in these finals. I yeah, mean, they want to get in the finals. Yeah, that puts the pressure on South if they lose just to have an area team in that, to have an national team in that final. Kelly Walsh is the key for Goffstown. Who's going to step up for the Titans? become perhaps the star of the game in the final nine and a half minutes remaining. Olivia Brandon will inbound it for Goffstown. Open in the corner is Emma Strong. Shot miss. What we have is a offensive foul. A push That's against Ariana Motovala. North already, John, was, uh, I don't know, three team fouls? Yeah, yeah, pretty low for yeah. both teams, yeah. I thought it was seven. It looked yeah. like a seven, yeah. but no, it's only three for, three for North. Three for North, two for Gosstown. Yeah. Kelly. And With 117 to play. Oh, this could open it up. Oh. Olivia! Olivia Brandon, left alone, makes the Titans pay. Big shot, five-point lead for the Grizzlies. As they make one here with one minute remaining in the third period. Kelly Walsh pushing the pace, going to go up with it, draw the foul. She knew she wasn't going to make yep. that, but again, another heads-up play by the senior point guard for the Grizzlies. Goffstown is... Junior. Hello. Goffstown's in control right now. Got, she makes these two free throws. They're up seven with 55.5 left in the quarter. She's got this season and another one to go. She's a junior. Oh, don't you know Stephen Largy is very happy about that. Yep. If you remember Stephen Loggy, he was our PA guy at Stella Stadium before yeah. Jason Roby did. Yeah. So as Ricky Oliver, our former uh, Nashua North coach, was Coast. talking about, he's right. over in Salem, Salem, New Hampshire right. now doing the tournament. She's going to get scouted. Yeah. She's going to play at the next level someplace. With that kind of basketball IQ that she has, and also the skills, as you just saw, it is now a six-point lead, 39-33 for the Grizzlies. With under a minute to go. Nice drive, but a Ooh. good, even better play by Look Olivia this. Brandon. Goffstown is really doing it on both ends of the floor. Yeah. Brandon had an impact with that three. Right, this three goes there in trouble. You're right. And they would be in trouble, nice too. Nice job by North. Yeah. Gets the rebound and the foul. That's a great job by the Titans. Julia Gagnon. She's an athlete at this school. You need to see more from her in this game, I think. You do. It's a lot of contributions from the Grizzlies, and as a team, the Titans will need more of that. Motoval is out. She's on the bench right now. Julia Gagnon inside, intercepting it. Getting in the passing lane was Elena Topazoglu. Yeah, North's only got... <laughs> Twenty-six, twenty yes. Eight points in this period. A down period for the Titans. A 
chance to end on a positive note, though. Throwing it up and almost making it was Janessa Lofton. The putback by Katie Carl. They needed that one. They Down did. by six. And a backcourt foul instead of two points. Non shooting. They put that on the board? No, they didn't. She missed it? She missed it. And it's officially a dismal quarter for the Titans. Why it is. And it, it may be the and story I'll tell you of the game. What, you know, it might be the same story. Oh, that is a bad foul. It's not a foul that's going to put her on the line, but it's a bad foul. And I think Christina Bean is not happy with the call. She thought it was a turnover. She yeah. thought that was a clean strip Maybe by Jaden Smith. That was a case of where the, uh, the star player maybe got the benefit of the call. Right in front of the North coach. Wow, this is going to be a look Brandon, at the basket. She traveled. No, traveled. Yep, yeah, you're right. 1.2 seconds left. Yeah. North will get an inbounds. It'll be a catch and shoot play. Who do you go to? I'd say Smith, maybe, or actually anybody. I'd say anybody. anybody. Who no gets one's them. really hit from the outside yeah. for this team consistently. Smith. Is he going to go? I do not think he would have counted. I didn't see anybody wave it. I, I wouldn't have counted it, but I didn't see anybody wave it. So. Yeah. It a nice argument to have, but it doesn't yeah. go. And right. uh, down quarter for the Titans, as Tom right. pointed out, they scored just eight points in the third quarter. Steve Largy, the Gosstown Grizzlies coach, told Tom before the game that in their previous meeting in the regular season, Titans actually outplayed Gosstown for three of the four quarters. If the Titans step up and have a good fourth quarter, right. you could say it's more of the same because they... They had a good first half. First periods one and two were pretty good. Not so in the third. And they are down by six. Entering the final frame. Semi-finals of the 2018 Holiday Festival Basketball Tournament. Round two here on a Friday, December 28 of 2018. The winner of this one will advance to the finals against the winner of Keen South. As Tom said, Keen yeah, is here. Keen they South, made the trip. We have right after this game, and I think there's the pressure. North trying to open the fourth quarter on a positive note with possession. Janessa Lofton. Julia Gagnon inside. Katie Carr uses the body. There nice is. play. That time she didn't shy away from the shot. She took it. Got the ball in the lane, catch and shoot. Brandon's open, she'll take short. it. Way short. They try to save it, they do. Somebody's got to grab that, Katie yeah, Carr see, if does. if you're north, that ball's up in the air. Don't wait for a Gosstown player to save it, grab it. Oh, and there's the power. Oh! There was another player waiting. I don't think she was intended recipient, but. See, I, I, think, yeah. North's, I think North is, they, they haven't succeeded in that, in that long passing game all day. Yeah. They need to slow it down and get up, set up. Cho's not in the game. Brandon's open for three. No. She missed that. Cho's not in the game, and Motovala's not in the game. So Olivia Brandon has taken three open shots in the last few minutes. She made the three, but she's gone a little bit cold here, and the Titans may be daring her to shoot. There's a travel. Katie Carr, pivot foot, slid. Two turnovers yeah. by the Titans. Missed opportunities to get back in this game. Yep. Kelly Walsh. Could she possibly be tired? I mean, it's early in the season. She's been on the floor running up and down the entire game, and she looks like she might be slightly gassed here, which would be good news for the Titans yeah, because oh, oh, nearly a steal. Tight D, Jaden Smith, and that's an offensive foul. Moving pick called against number 12, Kendra Cooley. I think that was the right call. It was, too. Jaden Smith working hard. Shuffling her feet. Draws the offensive foul. Opportunity for the Titans. Julia Gagnon driving. Lost the handle. Out of bounds. Well, three straight turnovers by yeah, North. That was kind of an unforced error right there. Just uh, If leading. you ask me, North lacks that kind of. They need somebody. They need another. They need a wall to take charge on the floor. They don't have that right now. Motovala, I think, can do it. But right now, on the floor, as we see it in this quarter, they don't seem to have that. Yeah, Ariana has not played yet in this fourth quarter. No, but they need somebody to take charge out there. I think Smith's got to be the one to do it. 
You're right. Brandon forced out in the corner. Gifford gives it to Perez. Perez bounce pass Brandon. Kelly Walsh has not been running the offense for the past couple of minutes. I don't know if that's by design. That's a good thing when Walsh doesn't touch the ball for the well, Titans. She's got it now. She's going to try to go right, but she can't get around the defender. Janessa Lofton is sticking yeah. to her like glue. Yeah, Lofton's played a good defensive game, I think, in this second half. Open look. That's yeah. way off. You know why? Loose Choke. ball, and Walsh gets it, but it's stolen back by Jordan Choate. Heads Jordan up play. Jordan Choate made that shot miss. She came right up and altered it. Janessa Lofton is going to take it back out. Jaden Smith, see how no room there. She gets fouled, you though. You see how disorganized they were on offense yeah. right there? You can see it. Yeah. They didn't quite know exactly where they were going to go with it. It's a four-point game, but it seems like it's 8-10. to ten. Their rudder, their captain on offense, returns to the game. Motovala back in. Let's see if that sparks anything. Down by four. Inbound play. Katie Carr, and That's it's good play. turnover. Yeah, Gifford <laughs> fronting. Four straight possessions, four straight turnovers. Oh, good job underneath. Emma Strong, strong to the basket. And it's a six-point lead again for the Grizzlies. Long time between buckets for Goffstown, but Titans just squandered opportunities. And another possession there, nothing to show for it. Here's Walsh, one player to beat, and she makes it. Just when you think she's out of control, she's under control. She makes the basket, driving to the hoop, her first points of the fourth quarter. So five straight possessions, North four turnovers and a miss. Motivala runs out of room. Off of it's gonna be Blue, Town. Yep. And that was after. Timeout, Titans. Yep, and I think they need one. Yeah, they do. Christina Bean trying to Restore order here to the Titans offense, which has struggled since the third quarter. They do not have any points here in the fourth quarter, correct? No, they did get one. They did get the two-pointer by, uh, uh, by Carr. In yes, the paint. they did. They did. That's the old, those are the only points in this quarter for them. They had an eight-point third quarter in the second half, and now we are... 11 minutes into the second half. They, they have 25 10. points in halftime. They have 10, in, they in, have 10 in, points in 11 minutes. Yeah, in 11 minutes, you're right, 10 points. That's not going to do it. Yeah. And it's not that the Grizzlies have played that great a defense. It no. just seems like, as you said, they're discombobulated on offense. It's almost like they are hesitant about who should take the shots, Yep. what type of shots to take. And who wants to do most of the ball handling? So it'll be Katie Carr, Janessa Lofton, Jordan Choate, Julia Gagnon, and Ariana Motovala, the five players on the court for Nashua High North, with under five minutes left in this fourth quarter to determine whether North will advance to the finals or not. Good inbound pass, and they get it to fall, and it wasn't easy. Katie Carr's got both buckets for the Titans here in this fourth quarter. And it is a six-point game as they dare Shannon Gifford to take the shot. Emma Strong, Emily Darty into the game for the Grizzlies, number three. High off the glass, rebound, Titans so ahead of the field. Lofton's got to save it, she can't. Again, that long and passing game just doesn't work for them, does it? Another squandered opportunity for the Titans. Just turn over this quarter, John. Mm. With a conservative pass, I think there, she still gets a layup ahead of the field, but it's too long on the Yeah, the just feed. needed a good pass, that's it. See it. uh, it's going to stay here. So a foul on North. It's their seventh. Yep. So that's a one and one, I think. So Janessa Lofton, and you're right, Gostan is going to go to the line because Olivia Brandon hit the deck. So if Brandon doesn't make her first free throw here, it'll be a live rebound, an opportunity for Yeah, North. I mean, this is not a Goffstown team that's done well from the line, I don't think, in this game. I mean, Except for Walsh. You know, she's, but even she missed one. She, she had, did. She she's, had one out of two in that in that third quarter free throw, so yeah, let's see. Yeah. 
But for the final 418, they're gonna shoot in the penalty. That's big. Those are three points for the Grizzlies. It's pretty confident looking uh, free throw form, I would say, from Olivia Brannon. Yep. She's practiced, you can tell. Yeah, Steve. Look at that. that, spin. Have to ask Steve oh. after the game if he wants anybody to come to the school this summer. Uh, she, uh, Brandon doesn't need to. You see that spin? Yep. Oh, that was great. Yeah, you don't want to foul her. No. That's the that's what you learn from that little sequence right there. Is don't foul her. But now it's an eight-point lead for the Grizzlies with 4.18 to play. Yeah, biggest lead of the game for Gostown. North needs to score. Jordan showed up top to her left. Julia Gagnon in the oh. middle just lost the handle. Yep. Brandon. Six turnovers in the quarter for the Titans. And there's Walsh with the three-pointer. No. Wow. That goes game time. I think she was shocked how that open goes she was. The way North is playing on offense, if yeah. that goes, that would have been it. It was a strange sensation for her to be that open. And it threw her off just a little bit. Like, I am wide open for this three-point attempt yeah, right now. I've had a Defender in my face for five straight minutes. <laughs> Driving, no. Jaden Smith. Kelly Walsh with it. Hands it off to Olivia Brannon. Ooh, almost took that third step. Emily Doherty avoids the travel. Brannon kicks it outside to Lena Tapazoglo over her head. Shannon Gifford back to Walsh. Right on her was Jaden Smith. Brandon's going to step she back. She three. She's going to drive the lane. And, lose and it. Uh, it was a mistake. She went into a triple team. Stolen car to the basket. I think a good non-call. And the Titans can't make the lay-in. The follow. What a tough fourth quarter. And they foul. Oh, this foul the wrong person. Yep. A tough fourth quarter. Oh, wait a minute. Everybody's Offensive coming back this way. Offensive foul yeah, about against that? Kelly Walsh. Walsh. Yeah, against Walsh. Offensive. Wow, you don't see that no. very often. No real argument, though. I missed it. How much well, do the Titans... Well, it's a case where you're going a full head of steam and the defender was smart, stayed in their place. How badly do the Titans need to score right now? Three minutes to go down they, eight. They, they don't have a choice. they got to score. They turn the ball over one more time. It'll be seven turnovers in the period. Motivala trying to find a seam that isn't there, but she gets fouled. Yeah, now, is, is, is Brad going to call in the act? Didn't get a shot off, but she was driving towards the hoop. One and one. Yeah. He's not calling in the act. No. So, Ariana, some pressure on her to make these free throws. Missed a couple in the third quarter. Kelly Walsh having a conversation with Brad Sapanis, one of our three referees. Titans have not had a good day from the line either, I don't think. No. Clang, 0 for 2. She missed that first one. I yeah, thought that was no, supposed to be a live ball. rebound. What happened? Oh, he must have been a two-shot foul. He must have called. I think he, they messed he must it have up. Called. He, he was not like this, I thought. Did Maybe he really? Yeah. Huh. Unless he was calling a foul on number 11. Maybe. There's no number 11 right. out there. No. Oh. But there's a 14, and she just made a three, and it's that a 47-37 right lead. was a right there. Double digits with 220 to go. Yep. And against a team that's struggling Actually, to score. Was that a three? They gave her a three-pointer or no? They gave her a two. It a should two. Be, it should be 48-37 if they called it a three, but I didn't hear him go three, so... Katie Carr's at the line. It's not out of the realm of possibility to come back. Only thing uh, is, John, not I this team you, just doesn't seem to have now, the shooting I ability. Mean, a 10-point lead in this game is like a 20-point lead. You know? Just the way the, the way both teams have played. Checking back here for the Grizzlies, number 12. Clock is on Goss side, the whole deal. A free throw clawed its way into the basket, and it's a... Nine-point game as Katie Carr takes her second three free throw and makes that one also. Clutch needed it. Full court press. Eight-point game. Olivia Brandon versus Jordan Schott. What do we got? Timeout. 
Yeah, Loggy wants to go over the press breaker is what he wants to do. It also takes some momentum away from that press. Also, I think he wants to give uh, you know what? If I'm, Kelly if, Walsh if some I'm north, breather. I would have pressed in the third quarter. I would have made the pressure up. I believe we have a special delivery coming our way. Mr. McFeely. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonathan Kayla. Waters. Yeah. You got Waters? and cold. Hot chicken and cold water. Thank you, John Kayla. Here we have North shooting and Gostown shooting. Hot and cold. It's been the story of the second half. More of the story is that Titans have been cold on shooting. Gostown hasn't really lit the gym on fire offensively, but they have carved out a nice lead here of nine points, eight points right now with the ball up 47-39. Katie Carr playing tight defense on Kendra Cooley. Officials let it go. Ooh, Olivia Brandon is swinging that elbow in front of Janessa Lofton. Kicks it out. Thought about the shot. Shannon Gifford instead elects to take more time off the clock. Kelly Walsh with it. Jaden Smith on her. Could have called maybe another moving pick violation there against Gosstown. Gifford, baseline. Clean block by Choate. Nice defense by the Titans, but Grizzlies succeeding in taking another half minute off the clock. Best defense, a good offense, or offensive possession time of for the Grizzlies here with a minute and a half remaining. Kelly Walsh with it. A blocking foul called against Jaden Smith. And that will put Kelly Walsh at the line to shoot a one and one. Julia Gagnon checks back into the game. Jaden Smith comes out. Goffstown firmly in control of this game. And Kelly Walsh, the reason why, at the free throw line right now. Sealing the deal for her Grizzlies team. Hits them both with authority. That'll do it. Yeah. Ten points difference with a minute 26 left. So it looks like the Grizzlies are going to advance to play the winner of South Keene and added pressure on the host Panthers team. Yes, a lot of pressure on the Panthers. Huh? To represent the no hometown kidding. in the exactly. finals of the yep. holiday festival tournament. Adding to the drama, the storyline for us. Because that game's going to be coming up next for us here on Nashua TV. John Collins with Tom King and Tim O'Neill on camera. Our executive producer, Pete Johnson, also taking in the game alongside John Pencala, tournament organizer, joining us earlier, as well as Brad Crick for Bishop Girton. Does Girton play the Grizzlies at any point? Yeah, I think do, they yeah? do. I'm not sure. I'm going to take a look. That will be a nice game. I think Gert would, yeah, Gert would, would run away. I mean, Gert Yeah, you know, you, you just, above. yeah, he's, they're on another level from what I'm hearing. Yeah. I, I haven't think seen Go it yet. I think I mean, Town's at that second to third, maybe that, sec that third tier. I think that, you know what I think is would be a great game from what the two teams that I've seen, Goffstown and Bedford would play a really great game. And they're close to each other. Oh, yeah. Julia Gagnon gets fouled before the shot. She'll go to the line. Yeah, I guess in New Hampshire right now we have Division One, Two, Three, and then for Girton it's college. <laughs> it's like 
Yeah. From what I'm hearing, I haven't seen it yet, but they're playing like college level basketball with those scores they're putting up. Pretty scary if you gotta get them on the schedule. Curtin's challenging themselves, though, as we talked about yesterday. They schedule those out-of-state co competition games. And Brad talked about it today. He said as long as he can do it, he's going to do it. Mercy. You know, I mean, but the thing is, is, you know, the thing is, is you want to play against great competition to make your team better. It's funny how they, they count those in the regular season so they standings. They do now, five or six years, about six, seven years ago they didn't, and then all of a sudden it changed. Dallin Motovala. BG feels like they can still get that number one seed even with playing, the, being the only ones that play those three out of state, those tough teams. To the line is Shannon Gifford. Jordan Choate back into the game for the Titans. One and one. Um, yeah. Live ball. Katie Carr wins it. 45 seconds to go. Jordan Choate dribbling it down court. Yep. Well, barring a miracle, there will be no north south game, at least. You gotta shoot that. You gotta shoot that three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're down. You're down. Yeah. 10 points. You gotta start launching them. Yeah. And you don't want any fouls if you're Steven Largie you, you, for your team. You don't want them to foul. Don't foul. But they did. You got, oh, Janessa was out there. I was going to say you have Jordan, Janessa, and Jaden out there. And they need to start throwing the ball up. <laughs> but uh, they were still driving to the hoop. Now they got to make the free throws. Katie Carr with the offensive rebound. Off of the foot of a Goffstown player. 31 seconds remaining. North calls time. Hmm. Just a coaching opportunity here for Christina. Beans. Well, she I wants mean, to if say, you had confidence in their three-point game, you yeah, would say it's still, so, you know, right? still chances, right? Because what you do is you hit the three, you foul, you hit the three, you know, you, got to, you play that game. These last 31 and a half seconds. If they come in on the inbounds and they launch a three and make it, could be here. It could take a while to play those last 30 seconds. Because they don't have a taste of it. But. Now, Ariana Monovala hit a three pointer in the first half. Do you remember any others from North at no, all? No, I don't. Yeah. They didn't take too many, like no. you said, even just to attempt. But. Katie Carr hit one, didn't she? I, uh, yeah, I think she yeah, did. Yeah, Katie Carr hit one. Yeah. Yep. So. They just needed to take a few more here in the final minutes of the fourth quarter. Best way to erase a 10-point deficit, that's for sure. Julia Gagnon with the inbounds duty. Final half minute of the fourth quarter. Some body contact there and that is the eighth turnover for the Titans in this period. If you're keeping track, which Tom is doing yeah, triple I'm double duty, duty here. today. Yesterday uh, I was Tom all the here. Photographs. You got your, I'll get you down for triple duty. To the line, the Grizzlies once again. Back to a double digit lead 50 40. In and out, Jordan Choate with 22 seconds remaining. Katie Carr back outside, gagged and in rhythm. Ooh. Up and over. Ball. 12 seconds remaining. Olivia Brandon. 
surfing the perimeter, finally gets fouled by Peyton Ryan. It was five seconds left, so we did not have a dramatic game. It, it just, Golfstown just pulled away. You could tell the way North was playing yeah. in the third quarter. It was a little different. Yeah, the Grizzlies were the ones who took control after the halftime break. It was anybody's basketball game at that point. A one-point contest. That was all. Glasstown, the higher seed, distancing themselves in the third quarter especially, and again here in the fourth. <laughs> Olivia Brannon showing off that fine free throw shooting form. Three seconds, chance for a final shot for the Titans. Doesn't go. And 52-40, your final. The Grizzlies advance to the final. And championship round of the 2018 Holiday Festival Basketball Tournament here at South as they'll take on the winner of this next game coming up. Now South versus Keene. For Tim O'Neill and Tom King, I'm John Collins. Thank you for watching Nashua ETV.